Hello everyone, welcome to this Getting Started tutorial for thermal simulations using Ansys Discovery. Let's get started. If this is your first time using the Discovery software, please be sure to review all the slides at the beginning of the welcome screen. These slides will help you get acclimated with the software and learn how to use all of the tools associated. Once you navigate to the end, click Open Homepage. From here, we need to load our geometry. Let's go to Browse, select a drop down arrow, and then Open Geometry File. From here, navigate to the appropriate file location, select your file, and choose Open. Now that the geometry is loaded, we can begin to set up our thermal simulation. In this example, we'll be simulating the electronics components on the internals of this router assembly. First, let's go ahead and scope our physics region just to these components. You can do so easily by navigating to the structure tree in the top left corner of the window. After opening this window, we can see that we have two icons to choose from. The left controls the visibility, and the right controls the contribution to the physics region. For this example, let's go ahead and remove the antennas and case from the physics simulation, as well as hiding these bodies. After we've done so, we can begin to set up our physics simulation and apply boundary conditions. To apply boundary conditions, you can use the ribbon up here in the toolbar, or simply you can use the hex, which allows you to control various physics inputs. First, let's go ahead and apply a heat flow to the bottom chip. To do so, let's go ahead and triple click this chip to select the whole body. Let's go to our hex, go to the thermal halo, and let's choose the third icon here, which is a heat input. From here, we can specify a total heat of 25 watts, or we could have applied a heat flow per unit volume. But let's just keep it as 25 watts. Let's hit enter to confirm, and our physics tree will update. So as you can see, we have a heat flow of 25 watts, and then we can simply hit escape to exit. Now that we've done so, we can begin to set up the materials for this simulation. By default, all the materials are gonna be structural steel. Let's go ahead and change these now. To change the materials, let's go ahead and triple click the board first. Let's go to our hex, go to the materials, where we have access to our recently used materials, other which exposes all the materials available, or your favorites down here on the bottom. For this example, let's just go ahead and choose the PCB laminate for this board. After doing so, let's go ahead and change the heat sink to aluminum. First, let's go ahead and click it. Let's go to our text box here and start to type in aluminum. On doing so, we can select two different components. Let's just choose aluminum alloy. Let's go ahead and change the material selections for the bottom components as well. For this conductance layer, let's go ahead and select it and let's choose copper. So let's go ahead and begin to type copper here. So we can just choose this last one. And let's apply the same material selection to the chip as well. So after selecting, let's go to our text box, start to type copper, and let's choose copper. So it escape a few times here to go ahead and get out of our material selection tool. Now we can go ahead over to the tree where we can review all of our assignments. We have all of our material assignments here, as well as a default convection, as well as a heat flow. In regard to the default convection coefficient, 10 is the default value, but about five is a good approximation for natural convection. Convection is applied to all the surfaces that do not have a heat or physics input on its boundary condition. So let's hit escape here, and we're ready to solve. To solve, simply click the power icon in the bottom right. This is green icon here. Let's go ahead and click it. And it will begin to solve our thermal simulation using our instantaneous GPU solver technology now that we're in our explore mode. As we can see here, we can see a temperature of 58.6 degrees Celsius is our maximum temperature. We can also expose our monitor here. And if I click this, it will go ahead and keep track of our design points and show us what we are working with in terms of our design exploration. Knowing that we are working with an entire assembly, it's important to make sure that all of our components fit into the housing. So let's go ahead and pause our simulation and turn off the contours by clicking this icon here. Let's go ahead and turn on our case to make sure that everything fits. To do so, let's go to our structure tree and just visualize the case and not add it to our physics region. From here, we can see that the heat sink is poking out through the top, so we want to make an adjustment to this design. To make it a little bit easier to see, let's simply click on this object, navigate to the right, click this button here, 
for where we can change the transparency of the top case. Upon doing so, we can easily see that we have a lot of interference within our design. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's go ahead and hide the case again, where we can allow us to easily modify the heatsink design. First, let's go ahead and hide this. And let's align our view using this icon down here in the bottom left. And let's box select from left to right, which will only grab all the objects that are fully encapsulated by our box. As we can see here, that it only selected the top face of the heatsink fins. From here, let's go to our hex, where we can choose our cube, which is our geometry operations. From here, let's go ahead and grab our move handle. To figure out exactly how far we need to move this, let's go ahead and turn on the case again. Simply click on the show icon, and let's align our view to be normal along the Y axis. From here, let's go ahead and start to pull down our geometry to a no ill fit. So this is approximately a good fit for our application, at least to make it fit on the first try. So let's hit escape two times to get out of our geometry operations and let's close our tree up here in the top left. Actually, let's go ahead and hide the case as well to make it easier to see our simulation results. Now that we've made our geometry change, let's simply go ahead and click play so we can solve again. And as you can see, we can get our instantaneous GPU simulation results in a matter of a few seconds. As you can see from indication here in the top right, we had an increase in our maximum temperature. Let's go ahead and click this where we can see our monitor. And you can see that it increased our temperature from about 59 degrees up to about 65 degrees. So this might still be within our design scope, but there is definitely a lot more room for possibilities to explore in ANSYS Discovery. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope that you found it helpful. Thank you and have a great day.